that uh, we can get that going. All right, got that moving. Looking good. All right. So let me uh, do one thing here. Cool. Okay. So, uh, in the past with these webinars, if you've been on here before, I, I've done uh, some uh, PowerPoint presentations. And, um, you know, PowerPoint's great and it certainly has its place, but um, it's boring and it kind of gets me monotone. So, I'm going to try this one today without doing any PowerPoint. And we're going to do just basically everything live. So, um, I've always, I had a trainer way back in the day that told me that, you know, when you do trainings, Chris, never go live because technology can go downhill. <laughs> He's absolutely right, but I'm going to take the risk here and we're going to do a lot of this live. So, um, getting some questions in. Hey, Charles, how's it going? Hey, Jack. Kyle. Oh, wow. We got lots of people in here today. Good to see some returning people. It's uh, it's awesome. Maybe I'm actually doing something right here. So that's good. <laughs> All right. So let's get started here. Um, Google My Business. Now, Google, you know, they're this huge company and they're awesome and they're multi-billion dollars and, you know, they're it's a great place to go visit. But, you know, they're a marketing company and they're kind of screwing around with the marketing stuff because Google My Business, if you remember, if you know much about this, you used, it used to be um, uh, Google Places at one time. It was uh, Google Plus Local most recently. And then uh, about three months ago, they changed the name to it to Google My Business. So if you knew what Google Local Plus was or Google Places, uh, you certainly know what Google My Business is. It's the same thing. They've just kind of uh, upgraded a little bit. And when they did the upgrade, they actually changed the rules on how people rank there. And I'm going to show you some examples of that now. So your practice may have been ranking really well for a very long time. Then they go and they change these rules, which is called an algorithm. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of uh, disheartening because, you know, how are you supposed to get back to where you were? So I uh, got some cool. All right. Got some good questions coming in already. So I'm going to get to those in just a minute. Cool. Okay. So uh, let's do a little live example here of what I'm talking about with Google Plus Local. I'm going to do a uh, dentist in, uh, let's see what I want to do. I'm in Denver, so let's do Denver, Colorado. This is a, you know, this gets a lot of searches, guys. Dentist Denver, cosmetic dentist Denver, kids dentist Denver, pediatric dentist Denver. Sometimes they use a CO behind it. Some people will use a zip code. Some people put like best Denver. You know, anything that you do that is a keyword with what I call a geo modifier, which is city, state, zip code, town, something like that, is going to trigger a Google My Business listing. And that's this middle section right here. There's, there's usually only a maximum of seven listings that will show up here. Sometimes you'll see them with three listings. Sometimes you only see them with one listing. And there's some different reasons for that. I've only got an hour here, so I can't get too detailed into this and into the weeds or um, I'll take up all of our time. But I, I've told some of you this in private conversations. I know some of you from Dentaltown, um, you know, some of you have emailed me regarding other stuff. And, you know, this is a hot button for us. My agency does, uh, I Fuse Dental Marketing does, we're a digital market, marketing agency just for dentists. So we do everything. We do SEO, we do Google My Business, pay-per-click, Facebook marketing, videos, uh, website optimizations, a lot of different stuff. But but this ranks in my top three of stuff that can have the biggest impact for dental practices in the quickest amount of time. If you can get ranked here and get your practice ranked here for very good keywords like dentist, cosmetic dentist, things like that, just doing that can lift your new patient count by a lot. Now, it's not the only thing you can do. And if you know me and you know my company at all, you know that we always preach um, integrated um, solutions. So Google My Business is great, but on its own, it's not going to be nearly as effective if you do other things as well. Sometimes it's Facebook marketing. Sometimes we do a little pay-per-click uh, while we're doing optimization. Um, we love to make sure websites are good, but uh, Google My Business is an important thing for you guys. Um, and this is what I'm talking about right here in these listings. Now, I'm going to refer to um, some of my colleagues here with statistics in terms of why it's going to be so important for you guys to be there. Um, most of these statistics come from Search Engine Watch, who I trust and a lot of uh, people in my industry trust 
wholeheartedly. They're a very uh, reputable uh, website. And if you like search engine optimization and things like that, you definitely want to go there and and check them out because they have some really good stuff coming through. Uh, but check this out. So Google's gone local. 59% of consumers use Google every month to find a reputable local business. 59%. That's a big number. Uh, mobile, you know, I'm, I'm going to do my maybe my next webinar webinar in a, a couple of weeks is going to be on mobile, but mobile is becoming huge. 50% of all mobile searches are conducted in hopes of finding local results. So mobile device, they're doing a search. They're looking for local results. Um, and another, it's not on here, but another uh, study that came out that said this will be the first year that there'll be more searches on Google from a mobile device than what there will be from a uh, desktop or a laptop. So, and it makes sense, right? I mean, you look at your own pockets, you probably got an um, iPad sitting there, you probably got an iPhone, you know, whatever, a couple of different mobile devices. So that makes sense. Local searches lead to purchases. Now, obviously this isn't specified for dental practices, but it's this is in the same genre. 61% of local searches result in a purchase. Right. So, you know, I tell a lot of my clients this and I, potential clients, I say, look, you know, it, 10, 15 years ago, it was a little simpler out there. Right. You put an ad in the yellow pages, you throw an ad and, you know, maybe in the newspaper, do some direct mail. You know, if you're a bigger uh, practice with multiple locations, maybe you're doing some billboards, you know, stuff like that. And you were kind of set, you know, you didn't have to worry about it too much. You knew especially that yellow page ad was probably going to work for you. Well, guess what? Fast forward 10 to 15 years and there's 500 places just to market yourself online, right? It's not nearly as simple. And, you know, I know there's a lot of dentists out there that are still fighting this, but guys, I come from the yellow page industry. I spent seven years on the online side of one of the biggest directories um, on the planet. And I can tell you from an internal level that yellow pages for not just for dentists, but for a lot of different categories is dying. And in some cases and in some markets, it's dead. The only time I tell um, my dental pick, not my dental clients to look at yellow page advertising is going to be when they're in rural markets um, where their usage for yellow pages is still pretty high. But what my point is here is that, you know, Google really is the new phone book. Would you guys agree with that? I mean, when when your new potential new patients move to the area or they need a dentist or they have children, whatever it may be, they're going to pick up that laptop. They're going to pick up their smartphone. They're going to pick up their laptop, whatever it may be, and they're going to look for a dentist there. Um, so some really good statistics here. And, you know, there's a lot more. You can see the URL of this. This is so it's kind of a long one. So I'm going to copy and paste this into the chat box so you guys can have it. Um, if you want to go and check this stuff out later, it's pretty good statistics and they're all, um, well-known statistics from a very reputable company. So there's a link for that. Okay. So back to Google, my business, we know what it is. I think, you know, it's important or you probably wouldn't even be on this, on this training. Right. So, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about how to get this thing set up. Um, I know that we've got a lot of different people on here and we've got a lot of different levels of knowledge regarding Google and websites and stuff like this. So I'm going to assume that you don't really have a good grip on Google My Business and you need some help with that. So I'm going to go into, where did I go? Let's just uh, Google My Business is all you have to really search for to get started on this. Um, and right here. So if you go to this URL and I'll put this into the chat box as well so you guys can have it. There you go. This is where you go to get started if you haven't already. Um, Google My Business is free. It's free to claim your listing, which is awesome. Now, getting your free listing and getting it to rank in the top seven on the first page of a very competitive keyword, those are two different things. So I'm going to try to tackle both of these today. I don't have enough time to get into all the tips and tricks and the secret soft stuff that we use internally, but I'm going to give you some really good stuff here that's going to help you if this is something you want to do yourself. Uh, at least get you a good start. So um, my business, actually, I don't really take advantage of Google, my business, because I'm not really a local business, right? I'm not really trying to rank for, um, you know, dental marketing in Parker, Colorado, which is a small suburb of Denver. So I don't really do much with this. So I'm gonna actually going to sign myself up uh, live here so you guys can see how it goes and see some techniques that we use to uh, get ourselves to rank as well. And then maybe if you want to check back uh, in a few weeks, you can check to see if I've got any rankings, right? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click sign in here because I already have a Google account. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. 
going live here. <laughs> All right, so you can see I've already got a couple of businesses uh, listed here. And just so you know, my business, whoops, where did I go? Okay, there we go. Uh, my business uh, started out as iFuse Internet Marketing back in 2009, and we've since branched out and we uh, specialize in dentals, dentists now. And then this was an idea of a company that we had years ago that just didn't take off. So that's why I've got a couple of different pages. So what you want to do, if you don't already have your business claimed, meaning uh, Google doesn't know that you verified it yet, um, you're going to want to click this get your page. If you've already verified your account, then you'll have a tile showing up just like this. Okay. And this little check mark over here will tell you that you verified it. So for my iFuse Internet Marketing listing, uh, that is verified. But for the iFuse Social Media Inc., it's not verified. So that's how you can tell. You always want to make sure you got the check mark there. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a brand new one here. So I'm going to go get your page. And then you're going to be taking, okay, what kind of service business are you? Do you have a storefront, meaning do you have a, a brick and mortar? Are you a service area? Or are you like a, a sports team, a band, something like that? For a dental practice, you're going to be a storefront. I know it doesn't really seem like your restaurant, retail store, or hotel, but you are considered a storefront unless you are one of the only dentists I've ever heard of that actually goes to people's homes and provides dental services, which I'm guessing you don't. But um, uh, mine, however, is going to be a service area, right? Because, well, I service the entire country and Canada and some other places. Places. So um, I'm going to go with service area. If you do have a practice that have multiple locations, it's a little bit more complicated. We've got a couple of practices that have three to five locations. Um, you're going to want to click down here on use uh, Google My Business locations. Okay. So I'm going to go service area here. And it's going to want to make sure that you don't already have a listing out there. Now, duplicates are a problem in Google My Business. Duplicates aren't as big of a problem as they used to be since this latest update, but they are still a problem and a nuisance for us. So when we take on a new client, one of the first things that we do is look for duplicates. And we look for penalties because maybe you've used another company in the past and the rules were different. And unfortunately, in my industry, there's just a lot of companies out there that um, try to find cheap and inefficient ways to do things and they cheat the system and they get their clients in a lot of trouble. So we look for duplicates and we look for penalties first. It's not going to be as easy for you guys to find penalties that it is for us because we have some pretty cool tools that do that. But uh, you can still find them on uh, duplicates. The best way to do it is go to Google My Map or Google Maps. I'm sorry. Type in your phone number first. See what comes back. Um, type in your address, see what comes back. Type in your name and see what comes back. If you're seeing duplicated, li duplicated listings, more than two, then you probably have duplicates and you need to take care of that. Now, having said that, um, Google My Business wants to create two listings for every dentist. So and what I mean by that, they're going to create a listing for your uh, main practice. So like ABC Dental. That's going to be a listing. And then they're going to want to try to create a listing for every dentist that works in that office. So if ABC Dental has two dentists in the office, you'll get your main listing. And then if Google knows about it, they'll get a listing for, you know, Dr. Rick and maybe, you know, Dr. Sean. They'll have a listing, too. So it's not abnormal to have more than one listing unless it's more than one listing for the same doctor or more than one listing for the same practice. Then you've got problems. If you've been in practice for a long time, there's a good chance you have duplicates out there and they will hurt your ranking. Google doesn't like uh, duplicates, even though Google causes a lot of these duplicates on their own because they go out and find information proactively. They don't sit around and wait for you to create this profile. So check that out first. That's my first pro tip, if you will. So I'm going to search for my uh, business here. I fuse dental marketing. Where am I? Parker, Colorado. Okay. So it's looking for, okay, who are you here? And it's, it found my iFuse internet marketing listing. It found uh, a couple of random dentists, probably because I do a lot of dentist searching throughout the day. <laughs> um, but none of these are mine, right? And it's in Google saying, look, make sure these aren't yours because we don't want to create duplicates. So I'm going to go uh, add your business. None of these match. And then you simply just put in your uh, basic information here. I'll do this really fast. I've used dental marketing. Now, pro tip number two, guys. We're going to talk about directory listings and citations in a second. And we're going to talk about why it's important to have your name, address, and phone number exactly the same um, on like Yelp and Dex and all these other directories as it is on Google Plus Local. 
Okay, we're going to talk about that in a second. And I'm going to put this in really quick, and you can always go back and edit it, but just be mindful of that. Try to make sure that you have uh, your name, address, and phone number correct in all the right places. 10233 South Parker Road, Suite 300. And you see the map's changing as I'm typing, which I think is kind of cool. But I'm a geek, so I would. <laughs> 80134. Okay. And main business phone number. See, I have an 800 number, which Google doesn't like, but too bad. Okay. So, six. No, okay. Okay. So now I go to a category. So, what do I do? Uh, Internet marketing service. Sure. That, and you can add more categories in a second. This is just kind of like your main category here. So, you can see I filled this out really quickly. It's pinpointed where I am. Uh, where am I on this map? I am uh, somewhere like right here. So I don't see the arrow yet, but that doesn't mean anything. And it says, I deliver goods and services to my customers at their location. You know, I do both. I have people that do come here because they are local, but a majority of my clients are out of state. So I'm not going to select that. But for you guys, um, you definitely would not select that, right? So I'm going to hit continue. Okay, it says we need to create a Google Plus page so you can manage your business on Google. Please confirm this information. All right, Google Plus. This is where it gets a little confusing. Google Plus is like the Facebook for Google, right? So um, that's their social media outlet. It used to be you could create a Google Plus local business account and then also a Google Plus social media account. And sometimes you could merge those two and sometimes you couldn't and it was an absolute nightmare. Uh, especially if you do this stuff every day like we do. <laughs> now they've made it much simpler though. Uh, once you create your business here, um, you automatically are creating a Google Plus page for this location as well. Uh, don't worry, you don't have to go back in and do anything um, because um, it, your, your listings have already been merged automatically. You may want to go check them, make sure everything's correct, but Google has taken all those profiles and merged them with a Google Plus page. So um, you have a Google Plus page out there, okay? Um, let me just check uh, something here really quickly. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm authorized to manage this business. I think I am most days. So hit continue. And it is uh, setting this up. I'm going to take a drink real quick. Okay, so... Uh, back in the day, you used to be able to phone verify your business. Uh, Google wants to make sure that this is you, and this makes sense, right? You don't want one of your competitors or an office manager that you might have fired <laughs> a couple of years ago going in and trying to uh, claim your listings because they could really cause some serious damage. So uh, what they do now, they used to be able to uh, phone verify, but now they mail you a postcard. Um, and it uh, comes with like a six digit pin. And then once you get that postcard in a week or two, you come back in here, you type that code in and then you're verified and you're good to go. Um, but that doesn't stop you from going ahead and uh, filling out the rest of your profile here and uh, optimizing it. So mail me my code, continue and verify later is what you wanna click. So that triggered the postcard to go out and I'll have that, usually it doesn't take two weeks, usually I have it um, a week at the latest, sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, sooner than that. So, uh, oh, I got a question here. This is a pretty good one. I've uh, I've done all of this as the question from Chad, and uh, I have not received a uh, I've not received a Google postcard. Yeah, Chad, you can actually go into the system and have them send that again. Um, you got to make sure the address is correct. Um, there's a place um, on there that I think you can put attention, you know, doctor, whoever. Um, sometimes if it's going to your office, which it obviously is because you put your address in there, um, maybe your front office staff, your office manager or somebody could have possibly um, thrown that away because it doesn't look, it looks kind of like an advertisement when it comes in. Uh, almost like a, uh, you know, like a, a direct mail piece or something. So just give your front desk staff a, a heads up that, uh, you know, that's, that's coming and it's important. So we try to email our clients. We try to email the office managers, you know, just to, cause if you have to have it sent again, you know, it's another week or two that we have to kind of not wait, but there's other things we can do, but um, it's another week or two before we can start getting people ranked. So it is important. So you can go through here and take a little tour. Google My Business is really trying to make it easy for people, um, but it's still fairly complicated. So I would recommend if you are doing it yourself, go ahead and go through that tour. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And this is where you can go in and fill out some basic information. 
Now, pro tip number, what are we at, three here or something, is typically I don't touch this thing until um, I get that card back. So if I have a new client, first thing we do is make sure we get the card, or if they already have a verified profile, we make sure that we have ownership of it. Sometimes people don't have it. In fact, here's a question right here. Um, it says, uh, I, I have a verified listing, um, and it, I have a verified listing, and I cannot log into it. I don't have the username and password. Um, what can I do? Yeah, we. this is a pain in the butt, I got to be honest. Um, we have some contacts at Google that we can call. You can also call Google. Um, they're getting better at their helpline. Um, I think we'll be able to get the phone number here in a second, and I'll share it with you guys. But that's a situation where you almost have to call them, and there's another verification process that they have to do. They'll have to pick up the phone and call you directly, verify that it's you, and then they can um, make sure that you are uh, the owner of the uh, – of the uh, listing. So it's a, just another step. My advice there would be just to contact them directly. Believe it or not, there is an 800 number and believe it or not, they actually answer the phone live. Um, some of it is out of country uh, customer services. Some of it's local, but um, probably 75% of the time we call and we call every day uh, we get pretty good service there. So that's what I would, uh, that's what I would suggest. Okay. I've <laughs> got a good uh, Charles. But Google says it's so easy a monkey could do it. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Well, I've got seven monkeys here, Charles, and sometimes we struggle with it. So I don't know if that's a plug for uh, the level of my staff or Google, but whatever. Sometimes it is easy, though. Sometimes if it's, it's a little simpler than others. So, uh, all right. So now, again, I wouldn't touch this until my verification card comes. But for the sake of doing some training here, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Uh, you can see they, they do make the editing of it pretty easy. You can change your profile picture right here. Uh, you just click on it and you can uh, just get a photo from your computer. Uh, it's an ugly mug of me I'll put on there for no apparent reason. Uh, it's too, uh, too small. It's got to be 250 by 250. So uh, make sure your photo is at least 250 by 250. So I'm going to get out of this. But you can add your photo here. Here's uh, pro tip number, where are we, five, four, whatever. Um, content is king. So once you get that postcard back, fill out everything you possibly can here. Don't leave anything out. Uh, it's extremely important. So, you know, um, content is king and that will directly impact your rankings. Your intro about your business is huge. Uh, pro tip number six we're going to get into here. This is where most people get penalized because they think that they know a little bit about SEO and they probably do. Um, but they get in here and they try to be spammy. So they try to put in dentist in Tucson and then they put some regular text and they put dentist uh, best cosmetic dentist Tucson <laughs> they're trying to throw keywords in here they're trying to throw in locations they'll try to put their website in here and guess what Google will accept it however Google will also penalize you for it because it doesn't want this stuff to be spammy right um, so you need to write this very naturally you know I we always try to put at least 500 words in this of really good original content don't copy it from your website uh, I know it's kind of a pain but this will pay off if you do this correctly um, don't just make everything sound natural. You know, you, I mean, if you write naturally about your office, the word dentist is going to be in there somewhere. And some of the things that you do are going to be in there somewhere. Just don't make it so obvious that you're trying to spam the system. OK. Uh, yeah. Why did it take me here? OK. So uh, contact info, obviously. Duh, right. <laughs> make sure you put the HTTP uh, in for your website. That helps. Dental mark. Getting.com email address. Now, don't put your personal email address if that's not how you want people to uh, do this or how you want people to contact you. Um, use your office. Most of our clients have like, you know, a general um, office that their office manager checks or whoever. Use that one. Uh, you can add more contact info, info here. Depending on what you do as a dentist, I wouldn't put your mobile phone in here, but you could put, you know, um, a, you know, maybe another phone number for emergency if that's what you do, if you do some emergency or your fax number, um, uh, whatever you want in there. Uh, just click save and you see it updates immediately. Now, none of this stuff is going to go live until you've got that verification code anyway. So, again, I would wait. But uh, pro tip number six. OK, 
categories. Make sure these are right and make sure it's stuff that you actually do, okay? So if you are a family dentist, put in those type of keywords or categories. If you don't do dentures, don't put dentures um, as a category. Or if you don't do implants, don't put implants in here as a category because um, they figure it out, believe it or not. So you can add more categories. Like for me, I'm going to just type in, You can, and it used to be you could put whatever you wanted in here. It was kind of a free-for-all. It was a mess. But now you can only select the categories that Google says you can. So what do I qualify here? Am I a marketing agency? Yeah, that works. You always want to be whatever you do the most. You want to put that as the first one, right? So if I'm a dentist, let's just look at dentist here. So you got pediatric dentist and cosmetic, right? Dentist is going to be your best category if you're a general dentist. Obviously, if you're a pediatric dentist, put pediatric. If you're a family dentist, dentist that sees kids, uh, put dentist, okay? And then you can add, of course, uh, pediatric dentist as well, but put dentist as first, right? Um, cosmetic, you know, most of you probably do both of those. If you are, I thought they had, yeah, dental implants. Um, let's see what else. Uh, if you're an ortho right uh what's another one um i wonder if they have yeah they have teeth whitening so if you offer teeth whitening put it in there but again if you don't do it don't put it in there all right so i think that uh makes sense right okay so my listing's gonna be so screwed up people are gonna think i'm a dentist i'm gonna get banned from google so i'm gonna have to go back and fix this when i get my verification hours of operation you guys have some crazy hours sometimes depending on uh what you're up to. So you go on to put those in and guess what? If they change, if your hours change, you're taking on more clients, whatever it may be, make sure you go in and you change it here too. Okay. So for me, I'm pretty straightforward. Uh, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. All right, save. And you can do, uh, uh, you just uh, add sets of hours. So like some of you might be close Fridays or Wednesdays or Mondays or whatever. You can be accommodated there. Photos. Put good photos in here, guys, and put a bunch. I would, we recommend at least 10. Uh, put at least 10 photos in. Make sure they're very high quality. Make sure they're relative to your business. So if I'm a mom and I'm looking for a pediatric dentist, I want to see images of the inside of your um, office. I want to see your staff. I want to see maybe even the dentist working with a child. Um, things that are relative. Don't put just you know goofy stuff in there that's not going to be relative. It's not necessarily a penalty with Google, but you know you're all you do want to convert as many people that see your profile to pick up the phone and, and make an appointment. So um, add some photos. It's really easy to do. Boom, boom, just upload them. Okay. Introduction. This is that business description that we we're just talking about, um, and that's it. Uh, you go in there and you just click done editing, and it saves what you've got done. And so I'm going to wait around for that uh, card to come in the mail, and then I'll go in and fix all this stuff so I'm not competing with any local dentists. They might be upset about that. Uh, but let me make sure I'm not missing anything here on my notes. All uh, right. How to set up, get right, uh, reviews, check for dupes, doctor listings. We talked about that. All right, cool. So let's move on here, and let's talk a little bit more about this seven-pack, right? So dentist, Denver. Okay, there's probably, I don't know, um, you guys might know better than me. I, I don't know how many dentists are in Denver proper with a Denver address, uh, but it's a lot. It's way more than seven, right? So you got seven spots here to show up for as a dentist in Denver. Now, we've got some tools that help because I can run all these dentists and I can see the stuff behind the scenes of why they're ranking there and what they're doing right. And it can tell me things that will, and it's just, you just have to outwork them, right? That's what it all comes down to. But I'm going to go over a few things that we really look for um, that um, will really help, um, especially if you're not in just, uh, not in just that competitive market, right? I got some questions coming in. I keep forgetting about the questions. So let me go to the questions really quick and make sure. Uh, what's the max number of categories? Hey, Jack. Uh, so, um I keep messing up your name. It's Brooke, right? You got to set me straight here. I've only talked to you like four times by email and I keep screwing up your name because when it comes through GoToWebinar, it like mixes all the names up. So some of them are first name, last name, and some of them are last name, first name. So I apologize. 
profusely. <laughs> so, um, yeah, how many categories can you have? You can have as many as you want, I believe. Um, if there is a max, I think it might be 25, but it's going to be way, way more than what you're probably going to need. Okay, so hopefully that helps. And hopefully you don't hang up because I keep screwing up your name. So, sorry. All right, so seven spots here. How do you get ranked there? We have literally a checklist of 175 things that we go through <laughs> to help people rank, especially in competitive situations like this. Now, it's much easier to rank if you're in a very small community and there's only a handful of a handful of competition, right? That makes sense. It's all based on competition, you know, how well optimized these other people are. But there are some things that do help immediately. Uh, one thing, and I'm not going to put these in any particular order because there's no one silver bullet, guys, that's going to shoot you to the top overnight. Uh, but there are some things that are more important than others, right? Reviews are one of them, okay? They, Google likes to see that you have reviews, okay? And you should have reviews anyway. Now, I know some of you are probably shaking your head like, yeah, that's why I pay Demand Force or Lighthouse or Revenue Well. You know, there's all these softwares out there and they're very good at getting reviews from patients. The problem is, is that they don't always show up on Google. In fact, they never will show up as an actual review on Google where they will show up sometimes is like here under more reviews. Like that's Rated Dentist. That's actually Lighthouse. So if you if I click that it's going to come through to the uh, Rate of Biz website. I, I'm pretty sure this is Lighthouse anyway. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? So they do a good job of collecting these things, but man, they're not getting them out into the actual reviews, right? So, I mean, it's not counting towards optimization if it's in this more reviews from around the web, right? So we want to do everything we can to try to get these into the actual reviews so it shows actual Google reviews, and I'm not going to lie to you. There's no real easy way to do it, but we have a per, we have about a 25% success with what we do. And I'm going to tell you, it starts with you guys, the doctors, if that's the majority of the audience here. Um, my best practice that gets the most reviews on Google, and you can do this for Yelp or Dex or any of these directories, but um, if you're missing out on uh, – Google, then you need to get more. Um, it starts with the doctor. Once you're about done with the patient, just bring up the fact that, hey, you know, we're really trying to get some more reviews out there about our practice on Google. Would you mind when you check out, uh, Thelma is going to give you a little sheet that's going to tell you how to really quickly go and leave a review and we'd love your feedback. Would you mind doing that for us today? And trust me, people love the doctors, right? They're going to do it if they remember it. So then as you're checking out, we provide our dentists with this kind of like a one page little, like a, almost looks like a direct mail piece, if you will. And it just shows really simple instructions on how to go to Google, what to click on and how to, how to leave a review. The reason more people don't leave reviews for you on Google or Yelp or wherever directly is because sometimes they don't have an account with Google and they have to create one. So it's kind of a pain in the butt for them. But if you, if the dentist actually asks them first and then they get that follow up piece and the follow-up piece is good. Um, if you guys want a copy of that, I can send it to you. It's no big deal. It's just a Word document that we use, and then we send it off to have it printed, and then we uh, just send it to our, our docs. But um, it, that works really well. And you don't need tons of them, right? I mean, this is a pretty extreme example. I mean, we course in dentistry, they have 75 reviews, and that's that's a lot, right? If you're in a smaller Tier 2 type market, then, you know, you may only need 10. Um, if you have under five, I believe it is, these stars don't show up. So let me do like a, a, a lower tiered market here. Let's see, where do we have a client? Um, let's do, uh, let's do here where I am, Parker, Colorado. Okay. So you see that the reviews are way lower here. Six, five, uh, 22 is pretty high. He's a well-known dentist here. He does a lot of marketing. Um, so, you know, it's going to be lower when you get into lower markets, but um, still, you know, Parker's 50,000, some people it's, it's plenty uh, tough to get here as well. There's, I think there's a hundred and some dentists in the Parker area. So, um, it's pretty big. Now, some of you, uh, we've talked about these corporate dentists like bright now coming into town. Um, this is another reason why you want to be here because you actually have a better advantage of ranking locally here than a bright now does that has a ton of locations. 
right? So you could actually rank much better than Brighton now and probably the most important part of real estate on Google rather than a corporate competitor. So another reason to do it, right? So work on driving those reviews. Obviously you want good reviews too. So take my advice and try to try, try what I'm asking. I think, uh, I think you'll get good results with that. Okay. So the other thing that I want to talk about here is um, citations. And we talked about this a little bit. Citation is just like Yelp. Yelp is a citation. Um, what's another one? Dexnose.com is a citation. CitySearch.com is a citation. So let me go to one of these. This is a citation, right? It's just a directory site. And all these directory sites, or at least most of them, allow you to create a free listing, right? Uh, the problem is, is that you have to go to each one and do it and verify it, and it takes forever. And there's no automated way to really do it or to do it correctly. So the more citations you have from the most credible sources is going to help you rank in this Google local section. Because what Google does, this is one of their big ranking factors. They say, okay, a dentist, this guy's searching for Dennis Parker, Colorado. Uh, let's see what we're going to bring back. And they not only look at like Mountain Dental Parker for their local listing, but they also look on like the top 100 directory sites and maybe even more than that. We don't know. But like the Yelps and the city searches and the Dexes and the merchant circles, we've got a list of like 200 of them here at the agency, right? And they look and they say, okay, well, Mountain Dental Partners, its name, address, and phone number is this. Now, what does it look like on all these other directories? And I know this sounds crazy, but you need to have your, what we call a NAP, N-A-P, name, address, phone number, the exactly the same on all of these different directories. That's a big pro tip number seven, okay? Go out there, look at all your directory listings and make sure that they, now if it's, for instance, here's or some people ask me and I just got a question in here from Billy. Um, what if uh, what if my suite number is spelled S-U-I-T-E instead of like the pound, what you're looking at here on letter E? That's fine, they can figure that out. But if you have a, a, a an address that's an old address or you know it just says 1128020 20 mile and it doesn't have the road, or if your phone number is an old phone number or an incorrect phone number, or your zip code's out of whack, or the name of your practice is out of whack, you got to figure that out and you got to fix that. Because if you don't, you're not going to rank very high usually. Okay, so citations are very important um, to do, and there's no easy way to do it. It takes us hours. If we have a client that's been in you know business for 20 years, and they've got you know these directory listings everywhere, and sometimes there's duplicates like on Yelp and all these other places, we've got to clean those up. There's just, and we have somebody that uh, I don't know how they do it and stay sane, but they just sit there and they do all these uh, citations one by one, and it's you know it takes a long time, but it's definitely worth it. So citations are big, okay? Um, let's talk about, uh, okay. The other thing that people don't think about, and, and let's just kind of look at this search engine page for a second, right? Um, it's, it's devised of three main areas for local, okay? You've got paid ads up here. These top three are all paying. Every time I click it, it's gonna cost them probably in this area, probably six or seven bucks a click. These are all paid ads over here on the right as well. Okay, so those are all paid. I'm not saying don't do it. Um, in fact, when we do optimization campaigns like this, this takes time. So you're looking at three to six months before we can really start getting good rankings depending on the competition level. Now, sometimes I see this a week later, I've got a guy that was nowhere to be found and he's you know number fourth here. Sometimes that does happen, but usually it takes several months if you're in a pretty competitive market, okay? So while we do that, we do some paid ads on Google. So at least that we're driving traffic pretty quickly for them. It's not as good a traffic as this. Only about 30% of people click on a paid ad. I mean, do you usually click on paid ads? You're probably, everybody's probably saying no, but somebody does because Google's like a $14 billion company, right? Unless they've got a room full of monkeys, right? Charles, <laughs> a room full of monkeys just clicking on these things. And I don't think that's the case. So we do some paid ads. We track it really well and it does get results. But what our end goal is, is this organic section, because when you can get listed on organic, it doesn't mean you're going to be listed there forever if you don't keep doing some stuff. But you're building an asset, a long term marketing asset. If you're just doing pay per click, you're only as good as however much money you want to spend that month. Right. When you're doing organic, you're, this has some lasting power. Um, red flag is if you're going to hire an SEO company is if they tell you that they're going to do SEO work for you and it's never ending. 
<laughs> you know, you're going to have to pay X amount of dollars month over month over month over month forever. It shouldn't be that way. Um, when we do, we do a lot of different things, but when we do SEO campaigns by themselves, typically no longer than six months is what it takes us. And that's for pretty competitive. Sometimes if you're like a cosmetic dentist in New York City or LA, something like that, you know, it could take six months to a year to get really good results. But in markets like that and you get ranked, uh, you'll, it's still going to pay off a huge dividends. So don't go with a company that's going to say they, it never ends and that every month they do optimization. And, you know, that's probably true. They probably do a little bit, but you don't have to do enough to to do, you know, thousands of dollars a month. All right. Sometimes we do take on patients. We try to get them ranked. And once we do, we put them on more of a maintenance package, which is much less than the original. But there's no reason to keep paying month over month what you what you pay originally. Right. So anyway, most people and then the third section of the website is regular organic listings, which are listings like this. And this is just getting your website ranked. OK, now in a perfect world, you got a paid ad showing up. You've got a really good ranking here and you've got an organic ranking here. Uh, sometimes that happens. Sometimes it doesn't. But you definitely need at least one because, again, it goes back to our being relevant. Right. If somebody's typing in for a dentist in Parker and you're not there, then you're probably irrelevant because they don't know you're in business. So we got to make sure of that. All right. So now the correlation and why I just went over that is that what it what determines on how well your website ranks here in the regular organic section has some bearing on how you rank here as well. So check this out. So like, for instance, Christine Thoreau is number one in Google My Business. Well, guess what? She's number one in regular organic, too. Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Larry O'Neill is number two. This is Larry O'Neill here. Number two. Um, uh, number three is Killingsworth. Uh, number three here is somebody else. So it's not, you know, an exact one through five, one through five, but my guess is without digging in this too far is the reason Christine's listings number one here is because she's number one here and vice versa. So what people don't usually think of is your website when it comes to Google my business, because you're just thinking of that little free profile that we just filled out. And that's really all you need to do to rank there, right? Wrong. So I'm going to go to Christine's website here and I don't know Christine. So, but I drive by her practice all the time. So we're going to pick on her a little bit here. Uh, I'll take a drink really quick. Okay. Wow. What's going on here? Maybe Christine needs a new website, huh? Uh, here we go. Okay. So this is Christine's website. And let me tell you pro tip number eight, your website matters when it comes to Google My Business rankings. Okay, it absolutely does. How well your website is optimized on site, meaning the stuff that you do on your website directly impacts your Google My Business ranking. And the reason is simple. I mean, when people click on that listing, typically it'll take them to the website. And Google says, well, we don't want our people going to crappy irrelevant websites because that's a bad user experience for our users. And if we keep giving people bad experiences, they're not going to come back and use us. They're going to go use Yahoo and Bing or somebody else, right? So that's why this is impactful. Okay. So pro tip number, where are we? Nine-ish. Okay. Is title tag of your website. If you have a webmaster, um, if you have somebody that's taking care of your website for you, Call them tomorrow and find out about your title tag situation. This is probably the number one most important thing you can do to your website to optimize it. It's not as simple as saying, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to rank the next day. Nothing is, but it's a pretty big one. Most people don't know what a title tag is, but do you see up here in my browser where it says Christine Thoreau, DDDS, Dentist Parker CO, voted 5280 Magazine's top dentist, family dentist, blah, blah, blah. That's the title tag. And all you have to do is go to the back end of your website and there should be a place, depending on what kind of website you have, to actually make the change to this. Now, everybody in this business has a different theory on what works best and what doesn't. Um, you know, I have my own theories as well and we have our own special sauce stuff. But in my opinion, this title tag is not that great because it's over optimized. Usually you only want about 135 characters here. OK, she's she's got a lot more. She obviously has a company working for her doing this, but um, she's got a good title tag. But I think it's just too much. OK, you want, in my opinion, maybe I'm getting out too much info here. But in my opinion, you want your number one keyword 
So dentist, we'll say our keyword that we're going after is dentist Parker CO. I want dentist Parker CO in there. Then here's pro tip number 10, put your phone number in there, your local phone number, your main office phone number, the same one that you have on your Google My Business profile. Anybody have an aha moment right there? Yeah, so we're trying to make Google see its own information, sort of. And most people don't know to put their phone number in there, but Google loves phone numbers. Put your phone number in there and then do a reverse of your keyword. So or as close to as reverse as you can. So uh, we just did Dennis Parker CO, then we're gonna do a phone number and then do Parker Colorado Dentist. Don't repeat the keyword because that would be kind of spammy, but just kind of mix it up a little bit. Okay, make sure your phone number's in there and make sure you've got another version of your keyword. And then if you got some space left, go ahead and put your practice name in or something like that. Just don't overdo it. And this is for your home page. Every page of your website has a title tag and every page of your website should have a different title tag. And each page of your website should be trying to rank for separate keywords. Don't try to rank every page on your website for Dennis Parker CO. Does that make sense? Okay, that's, that's a big tip right there. So these title tags and put your phone number in there. Okay, now on the other parts of the website, other than title tags, um, let's see, I'm sure she's got this. This is a biggie. Uh, oh, wow, they're overdoing it. Look at this. She's going to get caught. Look at this. So you see this down there? This, just, this is spam. Uh, Google sees this if they ever do see it, and she's going to get busted. She's trying to, you know, this is how people really try to rank for other locations. Um, this is a way to do it, but it's not the right way. Um, you know, they've, she's got every zip code in the surrounding market here, and this is just total spam. It shouldn't be working. It is for her right now, but uh, eventually Google's going to take wind of this, and uh, they're probably going to penalize her. So don't do this. Um, but somewhere here it is. Okay. So you see she's got her name, address, and phone number on the home page. Now, remember the nap thing, right? A name, address, phone number. You want to make sure this is exactly the same way as it is in that Google My Business profile, okay? I've got eight minutes left here, so I'm going to hustle a little bit. But make sure that name, address, and phone number isn't just on your home page. Make sure it's on every page of your website. Now, she's got it down here in the footer, which is okay. That works, and sometimes we have to do that. But... What I would do is I would try to get it, and she does, I'm sorry, she does have her name, address, and phone number up here, but it looks to me, guys, like this is an image. It's not text because I can't select it. So you want to make sure it's in what's called schema text. You're going to have to look that up because I don't have the time to really go through it. I'm going to type it in here into the, into the chat box so you can see. But that's the type of language you want to use when you put your phone number, name, and address in here because Google reads it really well. And it can't be an image. This is, this is an image, and that's no good. But make sure your name, address, and phone number is on every page, okay? Um, images, okay? Google can't read an image. They can't see what this really is. But there's a, thing, a term called alt tag, A-L-T-T-A-G. Um, and that allows you to go into the back end of your website and name these photos whatever you want. And that's actually a keyword. So if my keyword for this page is Dentist Parker CO, that's what I'm going after. Make sure at least one image is alt tag Dentist Parker CO. And if you have another image, do that reverse that we just did in the title tag. OK, but just make sure that all of your your images have something at least relative to Dentist because that will help you rank. OK, Um Nap KML file. I can't really go into that. Um, it's because of time. Let's talk about blogging, um, and then we'll try to wrap this up a little bit. Okay, uh, blogging is important, and the reason why is because one of the other reasons that not just how to get your website to rank, but Google My Business ranking, is because Google loves content. Content is king. Um, this website I just saw is from Televox. They're a huge company, and they're known to copy content meaning they'll build a website for a dentist. They usually do it pretty cheap, but they have the same content on her website as they have on maybe 500 others. That's bad. It needs to be original content, and they don't always do that, but I'm just saying we have seen several instances of that. So um, your website, again, is, is you need to really pay a lot of attention to it, um, but make sure you have fresh new content, and a blog can really do that. Uh, let's see. Is there a blog on here? I don't see one. Okay, so use a blog because every time you create a blog, and you don't have to do a lot of it, even once a week would be fine. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a 500-page essay. You know, do at least 250 to 500 words, 
um, and talk about something that you're good at, you know, cosmetic dentistry, you know, whatever it may be. And some of our best practices actually assign this to one of their people that are working for them. Hey, once a week, um, John, you go in and do a blog. The next week, Susie, you go do it. So it's not like you have to sit there and do it. You can't do too much blogging, um, but every time you create a blog, it creates a page on your website. And Google sees that and they say, oh, wow, look, uh, ABC Dental is, you know, they've added 10 new pages in the last couple months. They're adding a lot of really good authoritative content. You know, we need to really start considering bringing them back in the results. Now, obviously, there's not people sitting around a room doing this, but their robots or their spiders are programmed to look for things like this. So do, your save, do yourself a favor, add a blog to your website. Don't go do a blog site separate from your website. Make sure it's attached to your website and, and start blogging. OK, so I could probably go on for a couple more hours on this stuff, guys, but um, we're almost out of time. And I just want to I want to take some time for some questions here. If you have some questions, go ahead and type them in right now. We're going to take the next four minutes and answer those questions. Uh, in the meantime, while you guys are putting those in there, I want to go ahead and um, just kind of review a little bit. OK, so on site optimization, title tags are important. Name, address, phone number on every page in schema text. That's very important. Um, what else do we talk about with that? Uh, content is king. Make sure you're getting content um, out onto your site, published. Um, make sure you don't have duplicated content here. Just really think in terms of how people are reading your website. Don't make it spammy. Don't just put keywords in your text. Make it natural. When you get the opportunity to put in um, when you get the opportunity to put something in there, go ahead and do it. So, uh, okay. Uh, let's go to some questions here. Okay. Yeah, I knew it was Brooke. Darn it. You don't want to be called Jack. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm going to feel bad about that for a while. So I'm sorry. Okay. Here we go. All right, Chris, any way we could get a copy of that checklist your team uses for the Google My Business setup? So far, I did all this stuff a long time ago and need advanced stuff. Uh, oof, geez, don't give that out. That's, yeah, I can. I, did, I don't mind doing it. I really don't. Um, but honestly, probably more than half of it is going to be stuff you're going to look at and go, what is this? <laughs> but uh, yeah, anybody that wants that, put your email address uh, in the chat box and I'll send it over to you. Um, but it'd be kind of like you giving me a checklist of things that you do when you go through a, uh, a, one of your procedures, right? Like a medical chart almost. I'm going to look at it and go, what? <laughs> it's going to be a little bit like that. So, but I, I, no, no problem guys. I'm, you've, you've been to my webinars before, you know, I'm not trying to hold out and, you know, not give you good information. So, um, here's another one. Let's see what we got here. Okay, what are your thoughts on posting content to your Google Plus page, like the same things you're putting on Facebook and other social media? Has that taken off for any of your practices, just looking for ways to engage with Google Plus? Yeah, 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 that's a good question. Um, social media is another biggie for dental practices. They're always, and my last uh, webinar was on uh, dental practice marketing basically or for uh, Facebook but um, I don't there's not going to be a penalty if you do that if you just say all right I'm going to use this uh, software like Hootsuite and I'm going to post on Monday that about dentures and then I'm just going to copy all that stuff and send it out to all of my places at once the exact same content there's no penalty for that and will it help you yes probably However, when we do social media stuff for people, it's all original, okay? So we'll pick like three, Facebook, Twitter, you know, Google Plus maybe, right? And we'll actually post individual content on all three. We've gotten better results with that. But you're not going to get penalized. It's not going to hurt anything. And if you're not doing anything now, then yes, it will help uh, overall. I hope that helps. And, oh, and what I also wanted to do, I got to plug myself a little bit, guys. You're not going to hate me for that, right? But seriously, uh, you guys know me. A lot of you know me. There's a lot of new faces here too, though. If This is kind of a complicated thing, but 
definitely uh, get a hold of me if you have some questions, some quick questions on this stuff. More than happy to help you out for free. And of course, you know, we're obviously in business to do this stuff too. So if you need some help and you don't have the time to do it, and you don't find this stuff as fun as I do, you know, let me know and we can uh, we can definitely help you out. So that's all my contact information there if you want to take that out. Uh, next question here. I don't think I'm going to get through all these. Uh yeah, how important is having your phone number exactly match? Um, and the example here that we have um, is like your area codes in parentheses versus not being in parentheses. And uh, Taylor, I think I think you're fine with that. Um, we've we've seen those mismatches. We don't take the time and go in and correct those uh, where we can. So I think you're going to be more than fine with that. OK, so um, I wouldn't make that change if you have to. Um, it, Obviously, put it exactly wherever you can, but if you can't, you can't, okay? Okay, guys, I'm going to have to shut it down. We're past our time. I really appreciate your time. Um, if you have questions, let me know. Um, keep an eye out for our next webinar. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do it on yet, maybe mobile, maybe something else, but I try to try to hit all the hot buttons where I can and, and provide as much assistance as I possibly can as well. Um, and if you want to check out those, uh, I'll, this will be posted tomorrow on my website and there's a couple others on there as well. So thanks again. I got your email addresses here and those I'll be sending out that checklist to you guys. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. All right. Thanks again. And we'll talk to you soon.